Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Laurent. Oh, no, you have a French name, and I'm so bad at French. Uh, Dogon? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I apologize to everybody French. You just had to hear me try to do that. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining the show. So um, for folks who aren't familiar with you, do you want to give us a bit of a background on yourself and who you are? Yes, right. So my name is Laurent Dugain. Uh, that would be the French pronunciation. Um, well, you know, close enough. Sometimes I get dog win. Uh, so, you know, good stuff. Uh, I'm the director of developer relation here at uh, Cashbase. Uh, Cashbase is a NoSQL database vendor. What is a NoSQL database vendor in 2023? No one knows. Every NoSQL database do SQL and every SQL database do NoSQL. Uh, it's a thing that we had 10 years ago and it's still something on old companies RFP. So we are still the SQL. We are a JSON database. We're distributed. Uh, we are ACID. We have transactions. We have full text search. We have you know all the, the cool thing that people expect from a database in 2023. Um, and we also have a uh, cloud offering called uh, cloud.cashbase.com. Um, 30 days trial, no credit card required. That's the event a bit. Now I can I can talk about uh, all the stuff. Um, before joining Cashbase, before rejoining Cashbase, I'm what you would call a boomerang. Um, <clears throat> I started my career at Nexio. Nexio was an enterprise content management platform, uh, which has all sorts of problems to search for documents. And search has always been kind of a, a problem and a thing to address for me. So uh, uh, um, I've been in that space for quite a while. Then I moved to Couchbase. And then Couchbase 2014, it was uh, the early time of Couchbase uh, mm. at the time. Cashbase was in its infancy. Cashbase is the child of Membase and CouchDB, uh, which you might not know both of them because they're pretty old database. Um, Membase was the distributed version of Memcache, Memcached. Uh, oh, it was yeah. The, yeah, main competitor of Redis at the time. It's uh, in memory, it's key value, and it's distributed. Um, and then CouchDB was uh, this this weird uh, REST JSON database that popped up before Mongo, so in 2005 or 6 or 7, I don't remember exactly, um, from um, Damien Katz, who came from Lotus Notes, and Damien started CouchDB. And I'm going to be honest, before Node.js, having a, a NoSQL database that was full REST and JSON, that was kind of a... That was impressive, like, <laughs> who would have thought? That was before Node. Like, right. And so Cashbase is the uh, merger of uh, those two products, those two companies, which gives you, at the beginning, a distributed, in-memory, persisted, key-value JSON database. And at the time, you had to write your own indexes by creating MapReduce function, which was super scary, because at the time, MapReduce was a dupe, and a dupe was scary. It was big data, it was complicated, and all that stuff. Um, and no one wants to write that. So like everybody else is, as a SQL database from the future, we added SQL. Uh, mm. Now Cashbase is uh, distributed in memory, key value, SQL, also full text, also analytics, also a bunch of other things we can talk about later, but it's a, it's a full feature database, basically. We call that a data platform. Yeah. So so this is actually a question that I have because it, it does seem like in in times past, there were these big debates about whether you wanted to go with a, a SQL or a NoSQL database. And there were, you know, big discussions of the trade-offs between like, you know, if you have a relational database, then you get these upsides and these downsides. And if you use a document store, you get these upsides and these downsides. And the more I've watched the space evolve, it, as you said, it kind of seems like they've, they've all sort of grown together into like data platforms. Um, so can you can you talk a little bit about that? Like, is is there still a, a big uh, trade off to be made if you go with something that's like traditionally NoSQL versus something that's traditionally SQL, or are they kind of the same now? So it's interesting what you said. I think like if you're an old product, uh, a ten year old product, you end up being a platform, whether you're database or not. <laughs> like, like, you, Fair. Uh, every every product in the space, they all catch up to each other, and they all propose the same set of features because they all go about uh, the same market. So if you go mm -hmm. to the same market, you have the same feature and everybody everybody sort of level down into, well, now you're a platform, uh, which we are and, and most people are. Does it matter now? Um, yes, I think it still matters. I think there's, um, um, 
it depends on your use case, of course. Sure. Um, the, the, um, something that's been built 40 years ago as the architecture of something that's been built 40 years ago, it can support different features. We can add a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool fluff. It's still the same architecture. And I, I feel like if you're the evolution of something that started 40 years ago, there's no big bang you can do in your architecture, unless unless you rewrite everything and you start from scratch, mm -hmm. which some people do. Um, and, and sometimes it happens, uh, sometimes it doesn't. It's pieces by pieces. I feel like it's still interesting to choose a more modern database because you get a more modern architecture that will, that will allow you to scale to satisfy the needs of a more modern architecture. Mm -hmm. It's it's not to say that Postgres doesn't scale. Postgres does scale. Maybe not as well as Cashbase because Cashbase has been made for that. But of mm. course, you can add a whole lot of stuff around that and make it scale. It sort of become your problem now to make an old product behave like a new product in a way. I get I get what you're saying. So so you know the the trade off is like. On one hand, you get the the benefit of like Postgres has been here for 40 years. It's been used for literally every use case you can imagine, and it's really been put through its paces. But that means it comes with all of the like guarding and all of the architectural like layers and all of the past decisions that have carried forward that make tech like that a little harder to flex and use and, and bend to your will when there are new cases that are like you know, if you come to today, there are things we're building on the web today that didn't we wouldn't even conceive of ten years ago. So, let alone forty years ago. Um, what was the uh, Bill Gates was saying that what what was the number of memory that was enough? I think it said something like like five hundred and twelve kilobytes of memory is enough. Yeah, something and something magically low. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like that that doesn't even cover my JavaScript bundle. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, so, okay. I, I think I follow what you're saying. And, and you said something that, uh, that was interesting. You said that, that Postgres will scale, but couch base will scale better because it's built for that. Um, so it, I, I just, I just kind of want to dig into that a little bit more because I feel like that's a thing that every, like everybody says we scale. And, and so I'm always curious, like, what were the things that were focused on that, that make couch base scale? It's 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 mostly architectural decision. Uh, it's so if we're in the realm of data, uh, mm -hmm. there's something that we need to outline first. That the way you store things is completely uh, as a well. I mean, it's the other way around. The way you query things is completely dependent of the way you store things, uh, and we know that because we are programmers and we've we've done linked list and we've done hash map and we've done other structure and we know that if we already know the ID, a hash map is going to be great. And it's always better to to get this directly from a hash map, then do a for loop, and mm. then test every element of that for loop and see if the ID is equal whatever element you get. Mm -hmm. um, that's the basic programming example. It's also true to rely available for databases that abstract that. And so the way you store things completely decide on the way you're going to query them. Right. Um, Every database is started as a key value store. Postgres was a key value store years ago. It was called Ingress. And they've added some, some stuff on top of that. And so most databases um, have mostly one storing engine. Cashbase has four right now or five. Okay. Um, the way we architected the platform is like you have it's kind of four or five databases in one. Um, in a traditional, in traditional, in, in a modern architecture, you, would, you could have uh, a NoSQL database like Mongo, you could have a cache like Redis, you could have Elasticsearch for text search, and you could have Kafka to hydrate all of the things together to make sure they stay updated. With Couchbase, it's sort of the same thing, but it's the same product, it's the same architecture. And so instead of Kafka, we have our own thing called DCP, which is the database change protocol, and it updates the data node, which is like the document store, it updates the index and query node for SQL, it, index the, it updates the index, the full text index for search, the analytics, the eventing, which is our, our own trigger or user defined function, as we call them. Um, so we sort of build it from scratch to be able to add new workload as we go, as the as the product evolves. Um, so that's one bit. And then the other bit is um, we have a masterless architecture. Most databases have been built 
toward the leader follower model when you only write on the leader and then the leader is um, synchronized, replicated to the followers and you only send read to the followers. Mm -hmm. uh, which means that you can you cannot really scale the writing part. So you need to to scale the writing part. You need to add another a leader. And then how do you do when you have two leaders? Right. I mean, this is this is the like the classic challenge that I think makes people fear databases is when you you start thinking about like okay, well, sure we can replicate read, but then when you start thinking about write, you're like okay, but now we're gonna get synchronization issues and like what if we have simultaneous writes on like two different you know lead databases on the on opposite sides of the globe how do those merge and then you start your brain starts to melt out of your ears and you start to weep and and you just go you know what maybe we don't need a database after all maybe this whole app was a bad idea and we should do something else <laughs> yeah exactly i mean um, not, well that's the beauty about digital transformation is that, is that someone is bound to do that thing and put it on the shelf for you instead of you building you know thinking about it and that's what the cloud is as well, is that people have attracted all that brain melting into nicely put solutions. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I was talking about this um, with a, a different database provider that like it just feels like in the, the last, I don't know, a few years or maybe five years or so, there's been this renewed interest in like making databases accessible to people who aren't who would never describe themselves as like database architects, right? Because I feel like the yeah. DX has been improving steadily for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden it was like, everything went cloud, everything went self-serve. You you suddenly had this like automated replication and hey, we'll handle all of this for you. All you yeah. gotta do is push this button. Um, and that's felt like kind of a, a renaissance for a lot of folks because you wouldn't be able to call yourself a, a full stack dev before, but with all these cloud offerings, you don't need to be a full stack dev. You just need to know how to operate with the APIs of these full stack products. You don't even know using the database. It's yeah. like serverless. You don't even know using your server. So um, I want to call that DBS, but that's the that's the idea. Like we hide all the stuff and you just call objects. Really. Yes. That's, that's cool. And you create those objects. And that's uh, back end as a service more than database as a service. We are we are thinking about this as well, cash base. It's it might be uh, for the future, but mm. uh, people are always looking for the next level of abstraction. I'm a developer, I'm lazy, I want stuff to be abstracted from me. Right now I think the hardest part to abstract is the data modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, because people still have to do data modeling. Yes. Like the SQL was this promise that it's schemaless. Who cares about modeling? You can just store JSON and be done with it and, and just hope that everything's going to be fine. But the reality is, again, data modeling is sort of tied to how you store things, mm -hmm. which again is sort of how you create things. So there's one bit that people can abstract yet, and I'm hoping AI can help on that. That's actually one of the funny things about AI. I think it's more suited for a um, very well-defined, bounded domain of expertise like data modeling instead of just generating boilerplate code because there's so many different ways to write code. There's very few ways to actually model data and do SQL. Um, oh, interesting. So I'm hoping it's going to be interesting. You see, that there's this thing about three um, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth generation languages, uh, programming languages. The first was uh, basically assembly, um, mm -hmm. or was it zero and one, although the second was assembly, the third was C++, Java, etc. The fourth was something more domain constraint. So you have SQL, you have Bash, you have you could have Ansible stuff like that. And the fifth was um, uh, programming with constraints. So basically, you ex you you express a problem, you express the condition, and the thing is solving everything by using the condition and the problem. So you don't have to write code. It's just a, it's um, like Prolog or Mercury, all those 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 weird languages from the oh, future yeah. that are even more suited for AI. And so. If you take a first generation language, so Java, JavaScript, what you're going to be generating is more code, more code that you don't necessarily, you know, know, and that's that, that's that's more code that you have to maintain, and you don't you didn't even write what the thing like that's bad, and and could that code actually have been a dependency? Probably. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about SQL, the SQL is going to be generated. It's it's probably in your domain. It's probably something that you would have written, maybe the same way. I mean, of course, there's always some some crazy DBA that's going to write the query differently to optimize it better. And that, that's a whole different job. Sure. I'm not a DBA. Uh, so I feel that's interesting. I think that I have more hopes in the AI side of things around SQL than around um, Java or JavaScript. 
which was a very long digression. Um, what were we talking about? Well, we were talking about, um, you know, the, the, the value of how we've, we're kind of modernizing databases. We're seeing the developer experience come closer and closer to where you don't have to be a specialist to stand up. And, and you were saying that the data modeling is really one of the, the big, the last remaining challenges of, of that developer yeah. experience. Um, but so let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, Couchbase in particular. Um, it's a name I've heard for a long time. It is a, uh, you know, it's it's one of the ones that I've I've heard brought up. Like you you hear it get brought up along Mongo, Couchbase, you know, and and so on as like the no SQL stores, and and it seems like it's kind of evolved even further from there. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about today was full text search. And so full text is one of those things that is I think deceptively simple seeming. Where you know when I when I look at a pile of data and I think to myself. Well, I should just, if I type a word in, I can just look and see if that word's in the database, right? And then that's easy, easy peasy. (laughs) And then you start to actually think about the level of complexity involved in doing that with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of entries, or if you've got, you know, fields all across the database that all need to be searched. Like I'm thinking of, um, say, a product, like a product database, right? Now I have my products themselves, the description, we've got tags, we've got titles, maybe we've got image descriptions that we want to search, maybe we want to also include the reviews. Um, and for all of those things to be searched would be horrendously slow on a site that was in the thousands of products, because it was, it's just so many things. If you do it the way that I, you know, that my my developer brain would typically reach for, which is we'll just get everything there, put it in a, an array and then loop through it until you find things that match. Right. And so yes. yeah. full text is a way of, of making this not so painful to, to do. Um, and it seems it's like storing so, differently to query differently. Right. Right. And so, so this is something that's, is it just built into Couchbase? Like, do I just get it for free or, or is it, uh, is it the sort of thing that you have to think ahead and your, your data modeling includes that? You, you get that for free. Um, it's part of our uh, different services. Couchbase is a, a, we call that a multidimensional scaling architecture. So when you start Couchbase, you have the data service, which is the thing that stores the data. You have the index service, that's the SQL bit, the indexing, there's the query service, that's the uh, the query service actually allow you to query the index from the index service or the index from the full text service, which is another service. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have the analytic service, we have the eventing service, and it's going to be more probably in the future. And the, the beauty of this is that you can put as much service as you want on one node or as none. You could have a node that only have data service and some node that only have uh, index and query, and you probably put more CPU on the query node and, and more RAM on the index node because that's the kind of workload that they do. And then you can enable full text search to get for free, and uh, and, uh, and then you will probably uh, add a whole bunch of RAM to make that fast mm-hmm. and a whole bunch of CPU because it, it is quite consuming. Yes. Um, and each time you create a new document or update a new document from the data service, the CPU protocol is going to update um, magically the uh, full text service or the values full text service if you have different nodes. Okay. So you do get that for free. You do get the, if you think about how you would do it naturally, you, you would have your Kafka that goes and update your elastic. Each time there's something that's that's all down Kafka or Rabbit or Pulsar or whatever, uh, you know, you have your streaming thing that moves data around and you need to maintain that. Or you don't use a streaming thing and then in your code, you, you each time you update something, you make sure that you also update the full text index that's in another database which kind of suck, yeah. but you would have to do that. And you probably have to do that for the cache as well. So, so uh, it, with cache base, you just use one database and it's automated. And and I think, you know, you just kind of illustrated why I think this stuff falls apart for a lot of developers is, you know, if, if I'm building a website and I know enough to build a database and then I start to try to add full text search, then I'm suddenly, you know, I'm, I'm starting to realize, oh my God, I have to manage a Kafka queue. Like I'm not going to, do that. I'm not going to, I don't want to think about that ever. So I, I, I think this is one of those things where like, there's, there's this initial instinct. It's like, you know what, this is fine. I'll just roll my own. But as soon as you get into more advanced use cases, it really quickly becomes just a mountain of work 
to make this stuff function the way that you actually want it to function. And so I think that's, to me, that is really the, the power of where these database services like Couchbase have, have come is that I can use Couchbase, I can get full text search, and never in my life do I need to be aware that RabbitMQ exists. Right. Yes, because you don't want to. Because man, man, maintaining LM cluster is, is <sighs> right. It's. I mean, it's like if that's your job, excellent. If you're a web dev and you just want full text search, the last thing you ever want to do is be thinking about an event queue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes. So, so I think this yes. is this is the thing that is that is really magical to me is that stuff that I would have immediately run away screaming from ten years ago is suddenly something that I can just do. I can just decide that I'm going to build this feature into a web app. And all I have to do is grab the data platform that gives me the feature that I want, instead of having to think about how I'm gonna wire up all these really complicated backend services to give me the functionality that I want. So yeah, with, with that being said- about it. You don't have to code it and you don't have to maintain it. And no one wants yes. to maintain something more it, than they should. And, and I, I repeat this a lot. Um, I think that the, the goal for anybody who's building should be to spend as much time as possible building the unique value of the idea that you have and as little time as possible yes. maintaining the boilerplate functionality that allows that idea to exist. So if you can push a button and get a platform that gives you everything you need to run your data, that is so much better than trying to manage and maintain your own data service so yes. that you can build whatever your unique idea is, right? That that maintenance takes you away from building the thing that you actually want to build. Um, so with that being said, I, I want to make sure we have plenty of time to build. So I'm going to, I'm going to flip us over into starting soon mode here, which requires me to move a couple things around and get over here. Okay, good. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So first and foremost, this episode, like every episode, is being live captioned. We've got Amanda here from White Coat Captioning. Thank you so much, Amanda. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify and Vetsu Code. And also thanks to Couchbase for making this episode possible. Um, we are talking to Laurent today, and you can go and uh, do a follow on Twitter. And we're talking about Twitter, Mastodon, Blue Sky, LinkedIn, same end all everywhere. All, all, the, time. all the things. So yes, go go find on your favorite text based uh, microblogging platform. <laughs> I am not on thread yet. How should I ever go on thread? Oh yeah, threads. I done. yeah. I yeah, I don't know. It's it's amazing that we somehow made Mark Zuckerberg into the good guy again. <laughs> um Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, I bet on Mark in the in the Mark versus versus Elon fights. I am my money's on Mark. Uh, I mean, I yes, I I hope that fight doesn't happen at all. But if it does happen, I really Me hope too. that Mark Zuckerberg just humiliates him. Um, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> uh, so we're talking about Couchbase today. So I dropped a link in the chat. Um, we are. I think this is this is like where I'm at for a starting point. So if I want to give this a try, what's the first thing that I should do here? So if you want to try and learn uh, cloud.catchbase.com, that's our uh, Catchbase Capella, our cloud offering. Um, you know, again, first it's trial, no credit card required, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you look at um, on the, you can provision a trial, which you can do now, which is a good thing. It's going to set up your own uh, cluster so you can decide where you want to host it, which region. Let's deploy it now. This is cool that you have all, um, all the big three clouds available. The, the big three. Uh, there used to be the big four in Fresh Metal, and now we have the big three in clouds. Um, I, I come from a smaller cloud company called Clever Cloud uh, in France, uh, like oh, yeah. Heroku, but much smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually, uh, you know, people should give it a try. I don't think we'll ever integrate into Capella, but, but you know, Maybe one day, that'd be <laughs> nice. Um, so you have Couchbase 7.1.5 provision, you have your trial cluster. A trial is, it's currently deploying. You can see in the status bit over there. Uh, trial, it's uh, just a one node. It's just one Docker container that we're setting up for you that's full, fully prepared. Uh, the minimum cluster that we 
advise people to do is a free node cluster. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit big, but that's the kind of customer we usually have. And we are working on a way to make that uh, start much easier, uh, which should be coming at the end of the year if everything works. And you should, you should not have to start a free machine cluster and pay for a free machine cluster when you begin a new project. And right now, um, you have a 30 day straddle and then a free node cluster. So that's not great. Uh, we know that. Uh, still, give it a try on the on the cloud. There's uh, one cool thing called the playground, which is the icon you see at the top right, uh, right of the search bar. And as soon as your cluster is deployed, we'll be able to actually try some some maybe some node, maybe some SQL, depends on what you want. SDK for beginners is. Um, your cluster is LC. Let's do that. That's great. Um, SDK for beginners or SQL, whatever you want. Okay, uh, let's do let's do SDKs. All right. So it's going to start your tutorial, and it's going to tell you at some point when it's finished loading um, something. So node is selected by default, which is cool for us today. And by default, they are selecting. Uh, bucket and a scope. The the, um, the way you store stuff in relational table is basically schema, table, column, uh, which maps to bucket, scope, and collection with Couchbase. So now we've pre-imported um, the travel sample. Uh, you get the um, inventory collection. You can already run some JavaScript code through that um, trial cluster oh this is cool so it it because i selected my database it's able to run this code with the the credentials um yeah i don't i, don't, I actually yeah it that's works. cool okay so so that's there's more nice. to this code down here so we've got the bucket um we're getting the airline and then we are going to get all of the the travel sample or we're going to get the just the, one one airline yeah yeah Okay. And that's the content of the airline. You can see that an airline has a type, it's the airline, it has a name, it has a bunch of things, it has a call sign. It, you know. So that's a way to learn cache base, the SDK, by going through the sample data directly through the playground. You don't have to clone anything, you don't have to start anything. It's just, it's a good experience to start things with. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, that is one of the things that's really, you know, it just kind of daunting is when you're like, okay, well, I want to, I want to learn this, but before I learn it, I have to get sample data up somewhere so that I can query it. And I need the sample data to be like interesting enough that there are things to do other than like a simple get query. And that takes so long. Like there's so much effort involved in getting good sample data. So having a, a data set ready to go that I can just go and hit is, is a really nice, uh, a nice like quality of life improvement for somebody like me who just wants to learn fast. So you get the uh, code side of things. There's a bunch of steps to that tutorial. And if you select, uh, instead of SDKs for beginner, you can select SQL++. And that's the um, SQL that Cashbase uses. It's a SQL that's been made to be friendly with JSON because in a traditional SQL, uh, you you mostly have Scala type. You have simple type like string. Uh, you don't have object. You don't have arrays. You can have arrays, but you don't have object with uh, more uh, field in there, and you can have object of arrays, you can have arrays of object, you can have object of arrays of arrays. I mean, you can you, you, you get the, the the ID. So you can trans, tra, transverse, you can traverse, sorry, all the um, field of your JSON document easily through SQL without any weird syntax. It's uh, like a native SQL for JSON uh, version of SQL, which is quite cool. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is really cool. So, so, I recognize, like from my days of writing SQL, I recognize this syntax, but this is letting me like dive into the the JSON object that's stored in the document. Yeah, that's super cool. I love that. Okay, and you still get the 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 join. You still get the you know the traditional stuff. You also get transaction. You also you get a bunch of uh, things, and you get some interesting keywords. You get the uh, unnest and nest keyword, which are a way to put stuff in an array or flatten an array. So let's say you have an array of IDs and you do a nest that array of IDs, then you can join on each 
element of that array, which is quite cool as well. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, awesome. Okay, so this is like this is great. The, I love these tutorials. This is a a, a great way to kind of dive in and and learn more. It looks like it goes pretty deep here too, where it's going to show you all of the the major pieces and let's see what's in the SDKs. Same kind of thing covers all of the bits. Um, so did we have, did you want to spend more time in here? Or do you want to jump into some, um, well, we can probably jump into code. Okay. So you um, sent me this repo a little bit earlier. Should I, uh, start here? Yes. Okay. You can start here. It's the, uh, we can clone that. Uh, it's our next CS tutorial. It works with, uh, uh Vassell. We just announced a, um, Versa integration. Uh, recently, so you should be able to to do everything magically from that repo. I think if you you can probably fork it as well. Okay. Oops. All right. So then I'm going to head up here and I will. Do you these. probably want to fork it first and then clone that, right? Uh, the the CLI makes I think. Oh no! Did I just do this wrong? It's GitHub repo fork. And wait, what? Oh, oh, right, because I'm not in the thing. It's called tutorial. It's called Next.js. Oh, Next.js Quick Start. Next.js Quick Start. Okay, now I can fork it. Okay, so would I like to add a remote? Yes. Okay, so now if I double check. Oh, Get remote. We have origin is my fork and upstream is the couch base examples. Um, right. And it's good that it defaulted to my personal because remember, Vercel will not let you use organizations without a credit card. So um, the learn with Jason org, not welcome on Vercel. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So. All right. So, um, so what do you want to do? You want to open that in VS Code? You want to open that yes. in Excel? Yes. Let me, let me open it here first. Um, we will grab this new file. All right. And so we're looking at, make this just a tad bigger. Nope, that's smaller. Um, so we've got a, a what looks like a pretty standard looking API. Uh, so the uh, an index page, we've got a user page, and some utils it's that I assume we'll walk store. into later. So you can yeah you can see some profiles basically. Oh. Nice it's a profile store. If you take a look at mugdata.json, uh, it will give us the uh, the mug data file. Uh, we'll see exactly what data is going to be imported, uh, and that's just you know first name last name email. And an ID. That's all that we're gonna import. Um, Got it. Maybe take a look at package.json, and package.json is gonna show you um, when the import's happening. Um, Let's blah, see. Blah, blah. If you look at the uh, go up uh, and look at the build commands, the build command is gonna be executed by Vercel. It's doing a bunch of things that we can explain quickly. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's uh, running strip CVSDK, the next build, then load sample data, no env, then uh, a bunch of other things. So strip CV is, uh, uh, you know what the strip command does? It's, um, um, I don't even know how to explain that. Um, you know, adversary uses function, and that function are, have a limited size. And what you don't oh. know, maybe, is that the Node.js SDK from Cashbase is actually based on our CSDK, which comes up with this big fat binary mm -hmm. uh, that, that first and Netlify don't like because it's too big. Uh, and so what we do is the strip command is run strip uh, minus minus strip minus debug. And what it's going to do is, is remove a whole bunch of unneeded thing and make it more serverless friendly. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, next build, uh, then the load sample data, which we just show. So, and then there's a build index uh, target as well, which is going to basically run all the index we want for our app to work nicely. Got it. Okay. And so these two work. Uh, there are util folders for these. So to load sample data, yes. 
We are pulling in couch base. Connecting to couch base, we get a bucket. A bucket is like a schema in mm -hmm. that base. And then from that bucket and scope, we get a collection. We actually create that collection. It's called a profile, um, which is what you see here. Create a profile collection. And from there, we load the data and we send the data to couch base. Nice. Cool. Nice and straightforward. Makes sense to me. And the uh, the other one was build indexes. And oh, look at that. That's even. Let's so see. you should, everything's in ensure indexes. You see two uh, common create primary index on bucket and create primary index on default bucket, default something. What is the default something? Uh, these are actually default uh, profile. Default profile. These are namespace. When you do from something, uh, we call that a namespace, and the namespace is bucket.scope.collections. So in that case, call it your bucket dot the default scope dot the collection profile that was just created. Got it. And so okay. we can create an index on both the collection and the actual buckets. So uh, the the primary index on a bucket is basically let's do a full scan each time there's no index. And a full scan, for those of you who don't know, is when you do a query and you have no index, it's basically, mm, I'm going to read the whole file and I hope that I'll find exactly what that person is looking for, which is not ideal. Right. Well, cool. So, okay, so a little bit of setup code here. Um, nothing too overwhelming. Looks like a, a few dozen lines of code. Uh, mostly console logging, it looks like. And that gives us... Uh, what I assume is a functioning app, so I'm going to probably need to find all of my my bits here um i mean that's up to you. we can we can do a full local experience and, and do a docker run cache base and run everything locally first mm. yeah why don't we do, that? do that so yeah, i need probably better. docker um if you we have an official image um and on the readme of that official image they give you the nice command line that you want to run the exact right command. The reason I always go to there is that uh, Couchbase being this multi-workload thing with multiple services, we have multiple ports. And so I always struggle to remember all the ports that needs to be open. So um, so yeah, if you get to the, the official image, uh, come down a little bit. Um, you should see a Docker run example somewhere. There it is. Okay. So you could probably run, just run that, I think. And that's that's going to set up your local Docker cache based container. Okay. Let me make sure. I don't, I, I, we don't have time for NPS Docker. Okay. Um, I think this is gonna just work. Let's let's see if it's gonna force me to to log in, but we'll we'll try. It's a public image, so it should work. But you know, it's 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 tech, right? It's time somebody says it should, then it usually doesn't. <laughs> Famous last words, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's uh, let's try this out. And so we're doing a Docker run, and then a lot of ports, exposing a whole bunch of ports. And we end up at Couchbase. So let's run it. Yeah. Unable to find locally. So it's downloading the image now. Um, if you want, in the meantime, what we can do is we can install the Couchbase plugin on VS Code. We have a Couchbase plugin for VS Code that allows you to connect to any running Couchbase instance. And you can browse the different buckets. You can create new collection. You can edit documents in place. You can do a whole bunch of things. So that's Couchbase. Couchbase Lite, it's a different thing. I didn't talk about it, but we have a mobile database, which is called Couchbase Lite. Okay. And this mobile database allows you to embed the database in your mobile application that will sync automatically to the server database. That's one of the nice things that we've had, had as well. Okay. So this is... so done i think yes a should say running somewhere it doesn't Probably. say right. it looks like it just downloaded maybe i'll run it again well let's look and at you can, the, the easiest, yeah easiest way to try is go to 80 port 8091 it's localhost 8091 hey hey it works 
So you can start a new cluster or you can join an existing one. We don't have one, so let's start a new cluster. Okay. And so, so we I, give this a cluster name and it was going to be... Um, usually I call that Docker local because okay. I do a whole lot of things with this. Okay. And then administrator, administrator we'll sign, kind of password. And then we'll do... Uh, password, password. Oh, you you just want to use like the. I mean, you know, it's your machine. No one, in theory, no one can get there. Okay, so. Uh, accept the terms. Terms and condition. We'll... It's the enterprise version, so you have to accept the term. There is a community edition as well. Got it. Uh, and then you can go to configure uh, disk and memory. Um, so that's the services I told you about. Um, you don't have to enable node to node encryption because you only have one node. Uh, let, uh, sorry, Docker plays better in IPv4, so that's good. And then you have data query index search, analytics, eventing, and backup. You don't need the backup. You don't probably don't need analytics and eventing as well. So we can just um, untick those. Don't need eventing either. No, I don't think we will use that today. Okay. So uh, query is standard, like read access to the database. I want to look up entry number or the, with the ID 10. Um, it's SQL. S SQL. So that's a, that's a good question, actually. Um, you don't only do SQL. We are a key value store at heart. And if the value is JSON, then you can query the JSON using SQL through that query node. But right. basically, coming from Membase, the value up to 20 megabytes can be anything. Got it. Okay, great. And then um, index is uh, kind of saying like, yeah, I want you to take the the user email field and build an index on that so that we can look those up very quickly. Uh, and then search is the full text like, hey, we're going to get random queries and we don't know what they're going to be, but we need to be able to search the entirety of the data to, to pull that yes. back. So depending on yes. which of these you need, you can turn them on or off. I like this because I, I haven't seen the ability to sort of like toggle on these things to save space or, or save uh, processing power. So this is nice. I like this. Okay. It's, it's I, I sometimes refer to Catrace as the choice database. Uh, we have cursors when you install the node and then when we are coding, we don't have to be consistent all the time. You don't need to be consistent all the time. Like if you're Twitter, if you don't have the latest version of your timeline, that's fine. If you are, uh, Amadeus, one of our customers, they do uh, uh, booking, so booking hotel room or, or uh, plane tickets. You have to be consistent. They both use cash base. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, so I've got I've got the database set up. It looks like we don't have a bucket. And if I am understanding correctly, the bucket is what will get created when we switch over to uh, where's my Where's my explorer? Actually, I think I, I'm not, I don't know if you can create a bucket from there. Let's try. You can create one from here or from the. Uh, Does this one not create? A, no, it only creates a collect. Oh, only creates a collection. Okay, so I need to create a bucket. Yes. Okay. Um, I think your environment value. It's add bucket. All right, and then I will give it a name of. Let's see, we're we're just going to call this probably sample. App. Default. Default. Okay, default is easy. Yeah, most people use default. And then I'm assuming um, defaults are good here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't have to use that much memory. Um, because yes, cache base has an integrated memory cache. So each time you do a get. There's a good chance it's going to be in memory, so it's going to be fast. Each time you do a key value operation, there's a good chance the, 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 the value is in memory, so you don't have to bring your own Redis. It's already there. Cool. Uh, and, and you don't have to put all your data in there. It's a less recently used algorithm, so if the data hasn't been touched by anything, it's going to get out of the memory and nice. replaced by the new one. Um, do I want to mess with any of the settings? Yes, there's one thing that you want to mess with. Advanced setting at the end, uh, advanced bucket setting, there is a flush uh, button enable. We are developing, so flush allow you to flush the content of the bucket uh, in one operation, which is 
uh, the equivalent of drop every document. It's, oh, it's gotcha. nice to have that while you're while you're coding. So in, yeah, in development, we want to be able to just blow the database away, bring in our our fresh sample data, start over again, so yeah. that we can you know do all of our destructive and and other operations without worrying. That's nice. Okay, so I'll add that bucket, and it is doing a thing. And it's there. Uh, so I guess now you can probably run your your app locally, providing that we uh, fill that that thing. Uh, I think you need an env dot local. There's an env dot local example. Oh yeah, I mean. Exactly. Okay, so we and made then, this administrator. Oops. Password. Password. And the bucket was default. The, the connections. The connection string is uh, catch base semicolon slash slash your host. So probably local host. Uh, 8091 or? No, just local host. Oh, okay, great. This is um, when you're distributed, we use um, DNS server record. So behind one DNS server record, so one address, it's a server record. So you actually have several nodes that you can connect to. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, uh, so then I'm going to open up package JSON so that we can see. Do I want this one or do I want the dev default? Or well, something else? Dev. I think it's in the. Um, it's probably in the readme. Uh, I'm assuming you want the default. Let me see. You should have every. Oh, actually, in the readme, it says, um, set up and run the application, clone the source code, and then it's going to tell you about the environment variable, uh, which we just set up through the end of local file. Mm -hmm. so it's this, this bit. And then if it worked correctly, we should be able to run the init DB with the local profile, which is supposed to seed your database. Okay. I just realized I never ran the npm install, so I'm doing that real quick. And then I'm gonna npm run init db local. And so local is gonna use the file that we just edited and created. With everything. Bucket with given name already exists, that is okay. Which is creating the indexes, which is cool. Success. More success. Hooray. Okay, so that's good. And then we do want our data, right? So I'm gonna get the load sample data. And that did what we want. Perfect. Nice, I like the, the logging is helpful. Shows me that it worked. And we're not in Capella yet, so. I think that's fine. You just created everything, so you should be able to okay. uh, write your query. So, if you look at the um, the catch base interface, you can see that the document count went from zero to ten right there. Oh yeah. And we can go right into the documents. If you and... do retrieve, it might complain about not having an index. I don't know. We'll see. It's saying no results. If you click on retrieve docs. Yeah, I'm doing something wrong. Um, so yeah, you probably need an index somewhere. Uh, key space is default, default. And then is there a collection in the key space? Yes, default, default, and select the collection called. Uh, so that's the third, the third menu. So it's not really. Ah, there it is. Third, yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're we're in our our default bucket, uh, and then we're looking at our profiles, and now we've got these are the the pieces that we just this is how we seeded just our database. Imported. Yes. Okay. Yes. And now if I npm run dev, we're running at localhost three thousand. And we've got a whole setup. Nice. Okay. 
Oh, and you've got like editing and stuff in here too. That's that's nice. Um, so that's the basic app. Next year, I will use for the cell. Let's 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 play a little bit with it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't actually never looked at how the search works in there. Um, let's let's see if I just start doing so, a. Nice. Oh, might be a, actually might be a client side search. That'd be interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's let's take a look. So we're doing a oops. In here we've got our index. The index has fetch all profiles. And then it does look like it does a, it does do a search, I think. Um and then okay. so you might be able to modify that okay so somewhere down here there's going to be our actual search inbox sidebar and set search string okay and so here we have our input so the input is text that does the handle search field, which was back here. And we can go to the search or wait, where was it? Handle search field. Sets the search string. Okay. That makes sense. And then we set the search string up here and that's in a use state. So we can follow this around and see where it ends up. Yeah, cool. Okay, so basically, we are we are we are firing this off as a API call, which is pretty dang cool. So let's see. Am I on? Let's go to fetch, and then I'll do a type, and that is giving me a three hundred four. Oh, cool. So it comes back cached. Uh, let's try one of these. This was a new one. We hadn't typed that before, so that fired off. And you know we're running locally, so this is going to be like screaming fast. Um, but that's cool. so we are. This is like a network request. We're doing a, I believe a, a full text. This is the full text search here. That's that's no. It's, oh, it's should not. Should be coming from the next TS code. Um, oh, because it's API user. Oh, right. We're using yeah. an API route. And so then we get. Here. So that's a bit we need to, to look at. It's a post. Da, 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 da. There should be a couch base thing somewhere. Let's see. Yeah. So couch base, connect to databases. Um, here we get our cluster and our profile collection. So here we've got the ability to insert, get, upsert, remove. Dang, where's the search? <laughs> um, put handler. Query search. Oh, this looks this looks like it. So we're yes. oh we're doing a cluster query, um, not a not a collection query. I got it. Okay. So it's not a yeah. It's not a search query. It's a SQL query, which is interesting. Uh, it's it's just a basic like, um, which still works in some fashion, in some ways, just like you would with Postgres. Uh, now it doesn't this like doesn't work with uh, what is called fuzzy search. Fuzzy search is when you messed up one character. Right. So if you if you're looking for uh, 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 my name Laurent and you replace the A by another letter and you have fuzzy search fuzzy search to one. It should still pop up, but it won't pop up with like. And one of the things that that proper search can allow you to do is actually to have fuzzy search. It can allow you to do a whole bunch of other things, but it can allow you to do fuzzy search. Now, what usually happens is that people would do their fuzzy search um, on a dedicated search engine like Elastic or something else, right? And they will get the result back. And the result back is not the document; it's just the idea of the document most of the time. Because the way it works in the full text index is. Uh, when you when you store things in a SQL database, the field called name has just uh, the name in there, 
so it's basically the ID and the field. And the way it works with full text is, is it's the other way around. The, the key is actually the word that's been indexed and the value is the ID of the document. So let's mm -hmm. say you've indexed a whole lot of documents that have a description and in the description there's lots of words. Um, every single one of those description are going to have an entry in the table. Mm -hmm. And so if the description is, this is something cool and this is something better, there's going to be a line that says something with two values because we had something in the two description, which is the two ID of the document corresponding to the description. And it's going to be one value for cool and one value for better. And we don't care about it because it's, it's just noise. And most of the time we use something called an analyzer, which will, if it's uh, English or French or whatever, you can choose the language, it's going to remove all the words that are common. Right, right. So you don't need to do Okay. That's quickly in a nutshell how a full text can work. So you will store everything the other way around to query them the other way around. And that makes sense. Yeah. And, and my, um, and, and so the, the challenge with that is that in a lot of cases, this is two separate services. You've got your database and then you've also got your full text service. And so you, as the developer end up with this sort of complicated problem where you, you run queries against the full text, but then you have to like resolve the full text results into actual data once you get back your results. Cause like, as you said, you just get the ID of the document. Um, and that can be really like, again, it's just, it's another That's thing painful. I don't really want to have to think about. Yeah. And, and you can add another thing to that problem, which is, um, if you have a, a permission table, if you have permission in several documents, you need to check against the permission table that all the results you had from the full text engine are actually, um, okay for the user that the request to see because they might not have the right to see that because the permission table is outside of the search engine. Mm. And that sucks because then you need to do a manual join or something like this. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it gets very complicated in a big hurry. Um, and so this is, this is built into couch base is, is where I assume this is leading, uh, where all of these things are just being done for you. And I yeah. just get to say, show me everything that has the word cool, even if I misspell it. So we can fix that. Um, let's tr go and in, in the interface of Couchbase and, and try some query straight into Couchbase. It's going to be faster for us to to play with full text. Okay. Um, the first thing we're going first thing we're going to do is we're going to create that full text index. So if you go to uh, search, you should have a quick index on the top right. Quick index is amazing because it's an assistant to create a full text index. Um, so index name profiles. Key space, that's uh, your uh, collection called profile, which is already selected. And then you, if you click on first name, um, you have something on the right that's tell you what, I'm, what am I going to do uh, with that index. So you want to click on um, including search results. You want to click on support phrase matching. Maybe on support field diagnostic search. We're not going to talk about sorting and facetting today because it's probably not the the right time, um, but that's interesting too. And then you click on add. Oh, I got ahead of myself. Included in search results, phrase matching, field agnostic, add. So that's the first name. We can do the same with the last name and the email. Uh, and, and that's going to be a, it's going to create a global field that's going to work for anything we type. Um, and it's also going to work with fuzzy search, which is that cool thing that allow you to do mistake when you do, when you search on something. So uh, you create on. Oops, 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 uh, oh, oh, did I? I just broke it, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, doing it again. Let's do it again. There's a create index uh, uh, field. Is it's uh, yeah, it's a thing. You can create those programmatically if you want to. We. It's basically this is a JSON definition, and you can um, from your uh, cluster object in JavaScript, you you ask for the full text index manager that's going to allow you to assert uh, an index like this. Nice. So you click on cre create index at the bottom. Um, and so you should see that it's processing your index. 
Um, Doc proceeds processed zero ten. All right. So you have uh, stuff in your index. Uh, if you go to search, uh, um, type whatever name we add. You should it should come back um, on the on the search this index. Yeah. Oh, uh, search what this index. Did we add? Yeah. So, so here, yeah, on that field. Um, the fuzzy search is not enabled yet, so you need to tap the exact name. Okay. First name. Um, somebody. Oh, uh, there was a name. It was uh, crap. Um, look out here because there was Ermina. Names. There. And it should show up at some point. Uh, okay, cool. Um, so it works somewhat. Uh, let's try to. So that's just the full text index. It's not integrated to our SQL. So mm -hmm. um, you could very well do just like you usually do, which is query that that search index and then and then map this. Or because we have this cool thing called the flex index, you could use that search index straight through SQL, which is amazing. So mm. if you go to query, um, we can start writing that query um, by doing SQL. Okay. Um, so I'm going to select. Let's see. What are my what are my field names here? Do I so when I'm in a doc, do I get like profile dot email, or or can I go straight to email? So it depends on your context. Okay. Um, if you do profile or email um, from default, I think it works. Um, from uh, uh, Backtick, I think is what we use for um, namespaces like that. Yeah, okay. uh, and you don't need the underscore. The underscore is the scope. Oh. Here you need to first say. Uh, the bucket, so no underscore. Okay. Now, if I if I run this, is this going to give me all of my emails? Probably. Let's try that. Well, I know it's probably going to scream at something. Let's, Let's see. see. It doesn't scream, but I didn't query properly. So if you remove profile and just put email, it should still work because you don't have much. I don't think you have much document in there. So. Let's see. I am missing some. Is it? Should it be ah, all right. profile? <laughs> So, so default dot underscore default dot profile. Default. That's the full namespace. Default profile. No, you you it was a good good start. Yeah. Let's see. And key space need, not found. Yeah, you need the back tick on each of those elements, um, which is a pain. I understand that, but you need to have default full back tick dot underscore default full back tick dot. Oh, I understand. Okay. Got it. Okay. I've lost you. Where are you? You're here. So get all those email. Now, um, if you click on, uh, if you add select row email, uh, it's going to do something even nicer, which is um, if you select row email, you should have just the email. You shouldn't have even the. Um, um, Oh wait, I I screwed this up. Oh, it was an A. Sorry, uh, like raw. Oh, raw. raw. Got it. Raw. Got it. Got it. Sorry, raw. Oh, First nice. Volume. Yeah. So this is like a full, just a list. Which is cool because then that select close allow you to sort of shape the JSON that you want. Which yeah. Is, which is really nice. Um. Okay. So what are we going to do now? Uh, how much time do we have? We've got minutes. about. Not long. Yeah, like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think what you can do right now is Google uh, um, Couchbase SQL search, and this is going to give you all the information you need to um, call the search from a SQL query. There's actually a function called search that you can call straight up in there. I think it's the search function so it's this fifth one two three four five i think it's probably the five one the fifth one 
Oh, nice. Okay, so we've got uh, helpers here. And so the identifier. So, yeah. All right, where's my, where's my example? So we would select where search. Okay. So I can come back over here. Um, Where search. And then we would say, uh, and this, this doesn't work if you go straight to profile. Let me just, nope. Here and um, so instead of doing this, what you can do is uh, from profile as P, you from can, you can oh, add, oh. an, add a, you, you can add an alias to the, the namespace. Uh, so instead of retyping the whole thing, you can just use that alias in the function. So if you ask P, and you can you can use P directly in search on the first bit. So I can do Which like P nicer, dot right? email, or even yeah. like P dot uh, first name. No, just the P actually. Just P just works. Oh, you don't have to. You don't have to add a. Oh, okay, nice. No, That's... no. I just want to know in which namespace you are, and then you can enter your query. Um, the best thing for the simplest query that I like to use, um, let me send it to you. It'd be something like. Uh, um, from there, you can uh, add an object. Like this? Um, and I have a lag. Um, wait, there's probably some quote error or something. Yes. And you probably want to have something that's actually close to, um, the name. Yeah. Let's do with, uh, uh, there was, a, I think a Chris, Chris D. So let's spell that wrong. We still got it. So I'm actually going to do um, first name, last name. So it's complaining about something, is it? It's, I think it's because it's I had it at raw. raw um, yeah, I, I did raw and I yeah, didn't like, format raw, yeah, anything. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. So look at that. If, it if it you... works. I spelled Christie's name wrong and we still got the result back. Which is cool. That's really cool. And I, it like now this is one of those great sorry. moments where things just like I don't even want to think about how hard that would be to do on my own to get like misspelled words to return search results. Ah, wonderful. So you, we could go ahead and replace that straight to the function that we saw earlier in the code. Uh, or we can play a little bit more and, and we can go maybe a little bit further on the query side of things. Yeah. Uh, and, and we can be noted. Um, let's assume for the sake of the exercise that there is another collection called permission that holds a document with a list of ID. Mm -hmm. And we're going to match that list of ID to um, whatever is returned. So basically, it's about saying that only this person are searchable. Let's do something like this. So if you go to your VS code, let's open your uh, Couchbase tab. Uh, Couchbase. Sorry, create connection from cluster. So the plus on, on, on the upper side of things is going to not do anything because something is wrong. Uh, so let's not do that. Where, what's going on? If you go to problems, um, mm. it could be a lib. There are I'm there are so lib as a self problem. Many things that could be my. Uh, we have a lot of in extensions and 
things happening in this that uh, may or may not be causing So is it VS Code or is it Code Yum? Let's see. So because uh, I think it's OpenSSL that's complaining. For Mac. All right. So it was saying it was missing the. It was missing a command. Um, so if I show Couchbase, it says VS Code My, Couchbase dot create cluster connection not found. That could be because of another problem, and I'm afraid it's about the OpenSSL dependency. Uh, so I need to install this one. Uh, if your Mac has M1 chip and use this one, if your Mac has an Intel, uh, which one do you have? I have the M1. So I'm going to just run this over in another window here. Because obviously we try to be as safe as possible. So we using SSL to connect to anything remote. Uh, that being said, we're going to use our <laughs> local Docker container to do it. So it's fine. Uh, but we still need to have that working, mm -hmm. sadly. Um, we don't have to do it this way. We can, you can use the other stuff. I mean, that's sad, but let's see, it's doing, it's doing stuff. So what we're going to do is um, create a new collection called permission. And, and mm -hmm. from there I have one document and this document is going to hold uh, an array of IDs. And we can see that as a, a complicated permission scheme and we are going to see how it works. Okay. Um, um, we, we can do it from here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe that'll the, just to make sure we yeah. don't run out of time. Um, so I want to do that in buckets default. So you can buckets, yes, uh, default, and you should have scopes and collection on the top right. And from there, you should be able to uh, add a collection. And let's call that a permission. No time to leave zero is the default. Uh, because we are a cache, you can have a time to leave on a document. So if you're use, storing user session, they can uh, they will disappear automatically after the time we set up, for instance, which is nice. And from there, you can you don't have a document, uh, so we can create one. Uh, okay. Let's call it permission, and let's have uh, maybe uh, just an array. Okay, just an array Called permission. Like... Um. How can we? Or like. Oh, and a flag. And it's just an array and a flag and a, and a Boolean flag. Let's, let's call that uh, enabled. OK, um, so we'll go with enabled. No, so sorry. So you have to have an object as first uh, a stop thing, okay. a stop object. And then enabled equals true or false, whatever, uh, whatever we want. Oh, this is a this is a flag. So we'll say true. And then I... Oh, sorry. So, yeah, exactly. Okay, so IDs. And then we've got our array of IDs. Right. Uh, and the array of IDs, ID of the document that, we already, that already exists. Uh, Is this going to get auto-generated or should I just put in, like, a number? You, so you need to put an ID here and there. You can you can do what you want. Okay. Uh, one, one works. Um, so let's go ahead and hit save. Uh, and we can probably copy and paste a couple IDs from our profiles. Okay. Do I have those available here for copying? I do. All right. Mm. So I'm going to just copy a handful of these. Uh, we'll edit here. And I'm going to... Drop these in like that. And we'll just go grab... Like three or four. Okay, get one more. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so we've got three IDs saved in there, um, and we've got it set to enabled true. 
Right, so let's go back to our query and let's do a join because joins are weird and fun. Um, the idea here is that the document holds a set of permission of who's okay to be searched or not okay to be searched, mm -hmm. who is okay to be searched, and the IDs in the array are, I um, mean, you know, you can search me, right? So uh, we're going to need two things. We're going to need a, a, a couple of namespace. The first one is profile. That's going to be what we are going to join on. So after from, you can, uh, uh, right after the from, you can uh, hit enter. And we're going to add something before. We're going to add from uh, the collection called permission. OK, so, oops. So, right. The, the, so probably default, default profile. If you don't want to do all that stuff, there's a trick. Um, if you go up right, there's a uh, menu called context, and context allows you to place yourself into a context, the contents of a bucket and a scope. This way you don't have to write default default all the time, which is nice. So you can just have profile and, and permission. So from profile SP, but before profile SP, you can do from permission as PE, for instance, and permission as PE, a nest, a nest is the keyword that we use to flatten an array. And so you can get PE dot, uh, the array of IDs that we had, which was, I think, IDs. Mm -hmm. um, as user ID, for instance. OK. And we're going to join that on profile. SP, where, uh, sorry, 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 not where, on, join on profile SP on. Is it is it join or join on? It's join profile SP on something. On uh, P um, dot, and you're gonna... P ID, or was it ID? Uh, yeah, join P dot P ID equals user ID. Okay. And what this should do is do the join right and put all our objects on the same line. So we should have access to the flag enable. So when we do when search equals something, we can add and um, npe dot enable equals true. Okay. And so that should probably So this work. should, I think, fail. No. First name. Oh, because now we have multiple tables, so I need to get those. It's probably going to ask you to do a key space. So if you go to advice, it's complaining that you don't have. Oh, wait, no, not the right one. Key space and fancy bills, all the default, default permission. Oh, so maybe permission was not the name of the. Um... Do I need to reload this because we. So wait, so just for, for the record, the advice thing is cool because it just tells you what index to build. So you can just build that index, uh, which is still nice. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go ahead and create that index for you because we have a, a what's it called? A um, query analyzer, a query. Key space not found. Hmm. Okay, I think I, I'm gonna uh, head back to the Search or no to the uh, to the buckets. Yeah, let's see. Documents, and we are in. Oh, so you created the permission in the default, and oh, we don't what? have a, which is fine. We just need to replace. Okay, so um, yeah, we'll just fix that in the by underscore uh, by default. Okay, yeah. and so we're going so to go back to the search query, and, and so now instead query, of sorry. permission, it's default. Yes, and it should just work. No, and now it's provided about for index. ANSI join so term. You can you can follow the advice, create the index. I'm a lazy person, so I like when people tell me what index to build. <laughs> um, I say, well, you should not do that in production, which is true, uh, because sometimes it's a costly operation. But you know, we are developing, so you can go ahead and execute that. Okay. 
And because Christy is not one of our enabled IDs, um, we won't be able to search that. So let's try Saul. And we get back Saul, even though here we would get three entries if we were getting everything. But because only Saul is in the, the enabled, we only get that one back. So it's, it's, a, it's a good way to show that, that you can interpret full text search with the other stuff that you usually have around directly into a query, sort of a, a natural way instead of, instead of I don't want to even think about it and you don't want to think about it either because we know that it's painful to, to, to go and fetch something somewhere and, and map it with the other rule of some other data store. Mm -hmm. So it is fully integrated. Yeah. Okay, and so, so people may not realize it, but that's pretty complicated to do most of the time. I mean, this is like I, I feel like this is one of those good cases where what we what we are doing here is something that is like it looks pretty straightforward because this is all built in. But if you were trying to do this where you had to like get to Elasticsearch and then like get to your permissions table and then make the extra queries to get the actual data and then get all that on the screen. Like it just, it would immediately become one of those things where you're like, you know, I don't want, I, I'm going to do everything I can to get out of this ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be bad. Uh, and I've been there in my first job. So yeah, I, I, I agree. And that's one of the, the coolest thing I like with Couchbase that it really, it's not just about proposing different services. It's about making them available together. And that's the, the good part. Yes. So this is great. I mean, this, this is, uh, like this feels like a very, and you know, I know very little about SQL and I was still able to, to get this running. Um, we were able to, to set up some databases or some collections inside the database and get all that running. And so to, to deploy this, um, we would get into the, where is it? Uh, somewhere in here, we would get signed in here and then we would be able to just connect with our, our uh, in our databases. We've got all of our connection strings and everything that we would need, um, get our credentials. Yeah, so that's actually pretty neat. You can you can select the credential. It's going to tell you exactly the code you need to write, except your password, which is nice. Uh, you don't have to create you. So let, let's do that. Maybe we can go and create the credential and, and see. Um, there's a couple of things you need to do. You need to make your database available on the internet. And you need to create credentials. Yeah, so we would be able to just username, a password, some rights, some permission on the bucket, mm -hmm. or a scope. You don't have to have permission on everything. You can decide if you have read or write on a bucket dot scope basis. Cool. So you can be because of course there's audit logs as well and all that stuff. Nice. And once you have that, uh, you go to allowed IP addresses. And what allowed IP addresses allow you to do is um, to take a look at which address would you uh, make that thing available from. And right now it's your own address, uh, uh, I think it's your IP, and you can also make it available to anything uh, by using 0 .0 .0 .0, mm -hmm. which is not great, but for a demo it works. And if it's not a demo, under a lot API address, you have VPC peering, which is basically a, allow you to create a link between our database, our cluster, and your local network in one of your big-ass cloud. One cool. Of the, free, the big free. So th this will be ready for, you know, effectively any any uh, security team is going to be happy if you choose this because it's got all of the things that, like, I don't know what these things, like, I... I Academically, I kind of understand why why everybody cares about these things because I know that you don't want just unfettered access to your database and all that kind of stuff. But I don't really get a lot of like how each of these things works. But I do know that when you start trying to bring uh, vendor tooling into your company, one of the first questions you're going to get asked is like, how do we make sure that we're not going to get ourselves in trouble with data security? How are we going to make sure we're compliant with all the relevant privacy laws and and all those sorts of things? And so being able to just point at like, hey, look. <laughs> This is just here. It just works. Um, that's that's going to help, like, uh, which is something that I do think is a consideration when you're choosing a tool, especially if you're in a, a mature company, 
right? Because a lot of times the the new hot thing hasn't gotten around to adding some of this stuff yet. And so as much as you might be like, oh, this is going to be great. When you take it to security team, they're going to be like, do they, do they support all of these things? And the, the answer is going to be like, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so about that, yeah, we have the PCI DSS, the uh, EPA compliance, the uh, whatever the, the name are in the US and in your country, but we have a lot of certification already. Uh, that might be relevant to you. So, so we are doing our work. We are trying to be as compliant with as much uh, policies as possible. Very cool. All right. So, with that, we are effectively out of time here. Um, so, where should someone go if they want to go deeper and and get started here? So, cloud.cashbase.com. Create an account. You go on the playground. If you really, really, really don't want to create an account, uh, you go to cashbase.live. Couchbase.life is one day going to be deprecated, but Couchbase.life is our initial playground. Oh, wait. I did something wrong. Couchbase.life? Live. 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 Oh, live, uh, live, live. Sorry. Yeah. I, I was thinking it must have been deprecated before. I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> and it's pretty much the same thing that you saw, but it's not integrated to Capella, but you still get a good peek at all the different SDKs that we provide, all the different solutions. You'll even uh, get a good pick on the mobile uh, stuff as well. Uh, you can integrate your Capella sandbox. You can integrate your your. You can run it on your own machine. So it's a it's a pretty cool way to get started. Uh, and of course, uh, get with Capella. Very very cool. And there's the link to get your Capella trial. Um, make sure you go and give Laurent a follow. Uh, and if you have any other questions, you can direct them to. Here to uh, is there any other any other good spot for folks who want to um, ask questions, discuss, or otherwise get involved with uh, Couchbase? We have a Discord channel. Just join us on a Discord channel. Uh, if you go to community.couchbase.com, you should see a whole bunch of things uh, and and a link to join us to our Discord. It's called the Hub. It's where we we also have some ask me anything with some prominent Couchbase figures. Uh, there's a bunch of things you can do in there if you join the hub or if you explore the hub. Um, and then there's a link to our Discord if you want to ask us a question. We have a forum on forums.com if you don't like to the synchronous way of doing stuff on Discord, that works too. Uh, we try to be where you are. So, you know, if we're not there, just ping us on where we are and we'll find you. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, this episode, like every episode, has been live captioned. Thank you so much to Amanda from Wyco Captioning for being here. And that's made possible through support of our sponsors, Netlify and Vetsu Code. And also thanks to Couchbase for, for making this episode possible. Um, make sure as you're checking out things on the site that you go and take a look at the schedule. We've got just an absolutely wonderful lineup coming. Um, so, you know, I'll be back to my regular streaming shenanigans on Tuesday. We've got Fred coming back to talk about Astro 3.0, which is coming soon. We're going to talk about what's new in HTML and CSS, like new browser APIs with Yuna. Um, I've got episodes coming. There's just so much, there's so much good stuff. I've been lazy. I'm not getting them up on the schedule. Make sure you, you get over here and you can just add them right here with this button so that you always know what's coming up. Um, and you can also join the discord if you want me to, you know, at here whenever I go live. Laurent, thank you so much for taking some time with us today. Uh, any parting words before we send everyone off to their next destination? Well, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Uh, happy to, to 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 be on the stream and to teach a little more about Cashbase. And uh, I hope I'll uh, find you and see you around in some other stream. In real life, maybe. I don't know if you do real life conferences. Uh, we'll see. All right. Well, thank you so much, y'all. We're going to go find somebody to raid, and we will see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>